So we got a uh, question here from Stan. Um, he says he'd like to start the email with a big thank you for the last lesson on being. Yep, those of you guys who watched that, I just shot from the hip. He said, uh, it really hit home for me. Some parts of the call brought me to tears. I just also like to start this email with some good news. Today, I finally made it to 90 days on no fap, hardcore mode, after two years of trying to quit that toxic shit. Congratulations, Stan. That is amazing, bro. That is truly a breakthrough. And I don't, I don't, I don't take that lightly, right? I don't see that as a, as a small thing, man. That is huge because there is, you guys got to check this out. Uh, there is a, a, a guy on this topic of, of fapping. Uh, his name is E. Michael Jones. E. Michael Jones. Check out E. Michael Jones. He's got a book, but there's also some YouTube videos with him. E. Michael Jones called Lobindo, Libido Dominandi. Libido Dominandi. And he talks about how uh, cultures, countries, a people are destroyed through sexual revolution. And that the, the, the lords of this world, globalists or the, you know, the world leaders, they know this. They know that by unleashing pornography and sexual degeneracy upon a culture, that the people are more easily dominated because we grow docile. And he says that they, we, the, the, the world leaders trick us into thinking that this is a form of liberation when in fact it is carnal slavery. It is total slavery. Slavery to pornography, to jerking off, to women and dating apps. Libido Dominandi. And you can't even buy the book anymore. I don't think you could buy it on Amazon anymore. Yeah, they removed it from Amazon. It's been banned because it exposes, you know, how the quote unquote sexual revolution um, was a, is a culture war. It's based on culture war. You could check out some of his videos on YouTube also. I saw an interview he did with two young men. I thought it was great. And it was about, um, it was about uh, masturbation. But this guy, he's going to come to you. He's a Catholic. So he's going to come to you with uh, spiritual and philosophical insights uh, about this. E. Michael Jones, let's see if I can find the video. I'm going to get to your question. I just want to, I thought this, you guys would find this. It's called How to Thrive in a Culture Full of Sin. I'm going to put the link. Overt TV. Two young men. They look like, you know, they look like you guys age. It must be like, you know, in their early 20s. I'm going to put the link in there. E. Michael Jones. Um, and then there's also, he has, which is, this one is a lot uh, deeper. He has a video on the um, census fidelium, S-E-N-S-U-S fidelium YouTube channel. Um, it's called Lust, Power, and Control. It's sexual Liberation and Political Control by E. Michael Jones. I'm going to put that link in there for you guys also. So check those out, you know, I, and I just, I'm throwing this out there because I want to let you know how important what you've done is. It's so important that you guys get a break away from uh, the, the sexual indulgence because it's what allows the lords of this world to rule over us. It's crazy. You wouldn't think, right? Well, we're free. We're free. No, we're not. We've become, we've become more slavish since our quote unquote sexual revolution. And so with regard to women, you know, sexual revolution, of course, is birth control pills and abortions and, you know, being sluts. But for men, it was pornography. That was sexual liberation. We should be free to watch pornography. Well, you'll, you'll, you'll get, have a different thought of that when you watch these. Okay, cool. So Stan, uh, number, uh, anyway, I have two questions for you. Recently, I've been following your advice on following my gut to find my calling. After a long time, I'm coming back to the things I really enjoy doing. However, sometimes I feel a resistance to doing them as I start worrying about if these passions are productive for my future. If it's the wrong way, and I even worry that uh, what people think of me. 
For example, I recently got quite into poetry and songwriting, but I'm scared to share it with people because it feels vulnerable and I don't want to get judged negatively. And on top of this, I worry about it being a wrong path as I could spend the time elsewhere. I have similar feelings about my sports. I'm into football, but I stopped training uh, consistently because I know the chances of being pro are slim. How can I break these fears? As when I'm doing these things, it feels really good, but the fear takes over, so I tend to avoid doing them as much as I'd like. This is exactly it. This is exactly what we've been talking about in terms of um, listening to the spirit versus getting bogged down by the soul. And so I've, I've said before in many of my old videos, follow your gut. But even that, I, that's too low. That's too low. I say today, follow the spirit. I want you to follow the spirit. And you're following the spirit. You're following the spirit by doing what's in front of you. And I like... For example, I wish I knew how to write poetry. I wish I, could, I wish I could have a taste for poetry. But for me, that's not a reality. That's all ego. You know why I'm into poetry? I would like to have poetry because one of my mentors is into poetry, right? Ralph Waldo Emerson referred to himself as a poet. So I always thought like, man, maybe I should be a poet. But I can't. And even if I wanted to, if I tried to, it would be soulish. It would be from my ego. You, on the other hand, this comes easily to you. Here, here's another one. Here's another example from me, you know, from my life. It comes easy for me to get big. I can build big muscles and lift heavy weight. It's not easy for me to have a small waist. And I spent years, you know, I've gone back and forth. If you remember Elliot from 2008 when I was a pro strong man and I just ate and I lifted and I was just a big old slab of beef, big old beefy boy. But then when I started getting popular on YouTube, and then up until just very recently, I was doing what was pleasurable to the world, which was trying to keep my waist small, <laughs> trying to keep a thin waist. As a result, I discovered, and I even knew this because I have a YouTube video that talks about it, don't fuck with your breathing. I would do all kinds of like ab exercises that always fucked with my solar plexus, always mess with my breathing. And I would be restricting my diet. I even did all that extreme fasting, which I now look back at and realize, you know, a lot of that was pride. A lot of that was ego. Because I wasn't doing what just came naturally to me, which is lift heavy and eat big. That's it. I was trying to do what other people thought was right or what would gain what I thought would be more approval or better approval, a different kind of approval from other people. Uh, that's kind of what you're doing when you say, I write this poetry, but I'm scared to share it with people because uh, it, 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 I feel vulnerable and I don't want to get judged. Poetry, there's a, there's a great saying by Oscar Wilde. He says that art mm -hmm. expresses nothing but itself, meaning whatever judgment anybody ever has about art is wrong. <laughs> Any judgment you have about art is wrong because art is meant to express itself. It is what it is, right? So first of all, these people who are gonna judge you negatively, they know nothing about poetry. They know nothing about it. Now, I'm not saying be a sloppy poet. If poetry is your thing, listen to this book called, um, it's on YouTube too, Lead the Field. I think it's Lead the Field by uh, uh, Earl Nightingale. And he says that if that's your, that, that's your thing, then, let that be your thing. Buy books on poetry, learn the different ways to write poetry, you know, learn the instrument, learn the, mu learn the music, and then forget all that shit and just play, right? Learn it. Be good at it. Be great at it. Go deep. Go hard. Go hard into it, especially if your needs are met, bro, right? And it depends on what, your, what needs are met for you, what that means. But if you got all your needs, you got a roof over your head, and, you know, maybe you got a job and you're doing what you have to do and then you're doing all this poetry on the side. You're in the right place. You're doing the right thing, man. Now, what's happening is you're judging yourself. And it's not even, it's not even about other people judging you. You're projecting that on them. That's not even fair. That's not even fair for other people. They don't even get a chance to partake in the, the beauty that you are creating uh, because you're blocking the way. And that's, that's more soulish stuff. That's more 
needing to be uh, approved, you know, needing approval from people. And it's not an easy thing to get over, but I just want to draw it to your attention that you're on the right path, but you're hiding yourself, right? And look, don't expect everybody to love it. Don't expect everybody, don't, don't put it out there with the desire for accolades and admiration, but just be transparent. Hey, this is me. This is what I do. This is what I'm about, right? Someone's interested? Here, sure. If they're not interested, well, who cares, right? Because you're just creating art. And what is art? The expression of itself. Same thing with football, bro. You know, you're, what you're doing with this here, you say, you know, I stop football because I can't see it doing anything in the future, is you're being a fly boy. Remember that? Remember when I talked about being a fly boy? Fly boy is like, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to ignore what I'm doing right now, what I have right in front of me, because of what the future imagination, I ha what, what imagination I have about the future. Be where you are. Be right where you are. Don't force yourself, man. Remember I told you guys a few months back that like, you know, one of the things that a lot of guys, when they get into this program and they know about, you know, the books that I refer to and, you know, I teach them about reading and stuff. They're like, oh man, but I don't feel like reading. What do I do? And I say, don't read then. Don't read. Because maybe it's not a season for reading. You got you to gotta trust the season. And there's a season for football. There's a season for, for your artwork. And sometimes that season goes away and it comes back. Like, for example, when I was referring to the reading, I told the guy that asked me that question, I said, guess what? I haven't read a book in two months. I haven't read a book in two months. And I don't care. It doesn't matter. Because I'm not in a season for reading. But guess what? I knew, and you may know, that that hunger will come back. And guess what? I'm reading, I have like eight books. Yesterday, my wife came to the kitchen and she's like, your desk is a mess. Cause I, I stay in the kitchen, a little desk in the kitchen where I do most of my reading. She's like, what is going on over there? And I'm like, yeah, I have stacks and stacks of books. And I was like, I looked at it and I was like, wow, how did that happen? And I realized, wow, I've been voracious with my reading again. So I'm just following the season I'm following, following the instinct, following spirit. Right. I didn't, search to make that happen i was inspired to make that happen and you're inspired to create art and you're inspired to play football keep doing it you're asking me how to break free from the fears well you gotta understand fears are soulish what do i mean by soulish when i say soulish or i'm talking about the soul again i'm talking about thoughts will intellect will and emotions those are the lower three bodies those are the lower bodies that's the warrior, magician, and king. They're not your friends on their own. The warrior, magician, and the king are nothing but a distraction from the king. That's why the king sits high in the, have you ever noticed? The king sits high in his castle. He's got that like, that silo looking thing and the king sits up in there. He hangs out up there because he has to stay away from the warriors. Otherwise, he's going to get distracted. He's got to stay away from the magician. He's got to stay away from the lovers. He's got to stay away from the soulish stuff so that he can sit in spirit. Fear is soulish stuff because it's, you know, when I talked about our feelings, a lot of times being uh, dis, uh, disoriented uh, due to trauma. You probably have some trauma from when you were a kid. Uh, we all do. And it doesn't actually have to be like a blunt trauma, like bang, like something happened. But just years and years and years of conditioning causes us not to trust ourselves to be fearful of our, you know, our, our calling, uh, to be fearful of ourselves and to have fear. You are not made with a spirit of fear. Fear is from the devil, from the Lord of this world, from our fallen nature. It's not of you. You could even ask, you can even demand it to leave. Get behind me, you spirit of fear, for you do not own me and you are not of me. Because my spirit is, is pure. One of the things about the demons, too, is if you ignore them, meaning don't engage with them, don't judge them, they go away because they get bored. Demons will get bored with you. A demon of fear will get bored with you if you don't engage with it. But you acknowledging it, you uh, acting by it, they're like, ha, I got this guy. And they want to see you dead. They want to see you destroyed. They don't want you to live your best life.
So that fear is not of you. That's a made up thing that's, uh, that's caught in your soul. You can let it go. You can let it go. You can let it go and allow yourself to be. Just be. What's here in front of me? Football. Oh, do it. What's here in front of me? Oh, poetry. Do it. What else is here in front of me that feeds my soul, that feeds my soul, doesn't, doesn't destroy my soul? Do it. It's okay. And when we can get away from uh, safety and security, right? And I know that's been, a, that's been tough for me, tough for a lot of you guys. When our safety and security is met, that's when the spirit shines at its best. We have no fear. No fear of not being able to, you know, feed yourself. It's crazy because mankind has, we're at a pinnacle point in mankind, in history. And when I say pinnacle, it doesn't necessarily mean that this is it, but we're, you know, there's these cycles uh, where we do all that we can do to make life easy so that we have time on our hands to participate in higher stuff. But what happens is we get that free time, we get all that freedom, and we don't know what to do with it. We don't know what to do with it. It, it makes us anxious. And so I would say be grateful for the fact that you can create poetry. What a blessing that you have the time, you have the resources, you have the energy, you also have the uh, gift to create poetry. You know, Dobrynya talks about uh, the hierarchy of needs. Self-expression art is way at the top of that. You're living, you're living high on the hog, brother. That's way at the top. You can't, if safety, security, and uh, um, tribal association and things like this aren't met, there's no time for poetry. But you're freed up. Be grateful. Say thank you every time you open up your poetry book. Thank you, thank you. Thank you for, the, for being able to do this. You think kids, you think starving kids in Africa are writing poetry? <laughs> no, they want nothing to do with poetry. Get that poetry out of my face. I haven't eaten in days. Yo, it's your bro Elliot Hulse here and I hope you enjoyed that video. If you did, you ought to know that it was a clip from one of my most recent sessions with my King Transformation coaching students where among many things, we get together about four or five hours a week where we speak on things related to becoming kings in our lives, in fitness, business, and with women. And if you wanna join a like-minded group of men that get together every day to grow stronger in every way during this degenerate age, it's real simple, just Follow me on Instagram and then DM me the word King, K-I-N-G, and then me or one of my teammates will get back to you with the details to see if you qualify to join us. I really hope to see you perhaps at our next live call. Done.